This is a video for how to go about making the heart cam in Fusion 360 through using parametric equations. You will notice that we have in object lines, these bold dark um, object lines, the shape and the contour of the heart cam that we'll create. Around the outside, you're going to notice a circle that is drawn with construction lines. We're going to call this circle the nominal diameter of the heart-shaped cam. That means the nominal diameter is the imaginary circle that the heart-shaped cam will always fit inside of and be tangent to. We're going to go to Fusion 360 and start a new part. And before we start, we're going to hit save, and I'm going to call this heart cam. I'm just going to call that save. And we're going to go to modify, and we're going to go to change parameters. And in change parameters, we're going to go to plus, and I'm just going to call this for the sake of making this easy, DIA, and we're going to give it a value of one, and I'm just going to down in a comment, call this nominal diameter. If The thing about the comment section is if you want to make things more um, defined and understanding what everything you've named a parameter, you can put that in the comments section. We're going to go to plus again. I'm going to call this name whole. We're just going to put point one for the hole in this case and i'm just going to call this you know axle hole you could call this crankshaft hole whatever you want to i'm going to say okay i'm going to go to user parameters again and we're going to call this thick and i'm going to give the expression as 0.5 and this is going to be the extruded thickness that we will extrude our sketch to and we're going to go ahead and say okay now i want to go back to our sketch here and you're going to notice again we have we want to draw this circle and we're just going to give it a value when you see the letter d here what that means is the diameter of the outside area that's what this d is referencing so everything else is going to be some kind of a fraction of that diameter so we're going to go back uh, we're going to go over into our origin tab and you can choose whatever tab you want notice that if i just lay my mouse on top of any of these planes you're going to see them show up i'm going to grab a hold of um, create a sketch and we're going to use the XZ plane in this case and I'm going to click on circle click on my origin and drag out and as I drag I'm going to type DIA and I'm going to hit enter twice and you're going to see an FX and that means function that means that this one diameter is a function of the parametric um, constraint that we placed um, within parameters we're going to click on the outside of the circle and we're going to come over to construction and we're going to change that to a construction line now next thing we want to do is we want to draw one of these circles over here on the side and we're going to ignore the radius um, dimension that they give this r is the diameter divided by four we're going to ignore that we're really just going to place a circle and just constrain it to the outside edge so we're going to grab a hold of circle and somewhere in the top left hand quadrant in our area we're just going to click and we're just going to draw a circle and I'm going to hit escape twice on my keyboard. Anytime that you create anything and you right click as you drag out, you'll get a separate menu. I like hitting escape twice to kind of clear everything and then use my toolbar up here. But there's different ways to go about utilizing a lot of different things in this program. There's no wrong way necessarily to dimension something or constrain something, but there are different steps. In this case, we're going to go up to tangent and we're going to click on the outside edge of our circle and make it tangent to our nominal diameter circle. I'm going to come up to dimension and we're going to place the horizontal dimension here and I'm just going to drag straight up and I'm going to go back down here to my drawing and it's the nominal diameter divided by five so I'm just going to type out DIA divided by five and hit enter now we have to place the vertical constraint which is going to be DIA divided by eight I'm going to go back into dimension center point to center point type out DIA divided by eight and hit enter again note that it's case sensitive if I was lowercase DIA be it would make some different things but in this case I want to make sure that I am always case sensitive whenever I am doing any kind of a function you'll notice that we've placed these functions now you might be saying well then why in the world did they tell me to dimension this out here what you'll notice is that if we come up to inspect and we click on the outside edge of this circle we scroll down a little bit here you're going to notice that we're pretty close to what it would want you know it's saying the dia the radius here is the diameter divided by four which would be 0.25 so the diameter would be 0.5 so if we come back in here into fusion you know we're off a little bit but for the sake of creating this, I'm willing to go ahead and be off with the radius and the diameter for now just a little bit because the main point of having a nominal diameter is that this sketch right here will always touch this edge. If we change this diameter, this will automatically adjust and always touch the edge of our nominal diameter. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the opposite side. We're going to draw a circle. We're going to go to tangent constraint. And we're going to click here. What's nice about what we're going to do next is we're just going to go ahead and start placing these, you know, location dimension constraints, but I can always just come over and just tap 
on this function. Exact same thing, but on the opposite side, and that's d5. That means dimension 5. And we're going to place that. Do the exact same thing for the vertical dimension. We're going to tap over here, and we're going to hit Enter. And we now have for ourselves two separate circles that are abiding by the same function. So I could come over here theoretically and say, you know, never mind. It's actually going to be 7, and I could hit Enter, and it will automatically adjust. But the important part is that these circles stay tangent to our nominal diameter. I'm going to hit undo to go back to divided by 8. There's not much of a point of having a nominal diameter if we're going to allow any of our geometry to go outside of that. So we're going to keep this as it is for now. So our next dimension we want to place is we want to put this hole down here at the bottom, and it has a radius of diameter divided by 10. Notice that this also gives you know a 9 times diameter divided by 20 dimension of where they want to lock that in place. But the most important part is that this curve is tangent to the nominal diameter. We're going to ignore this, um, this you know, parametric equation for now, and we're just going to place the circle at the bottom. So we're going to click on circle and we're going to come down here and I just want to draw for myself a circle. I'm going to escape twice on my keyboard and I want to create a vertical constraint between the center of this circle and our origin and it's automatically going to adjust. Remember if I place that I can't go left or right I can only go up and down. We're going to go to tangent. We're going to click here. Go to tangent. Now when I go to to dimension this object. I'm going to click and drag out and I'm going to place, but I'm going to hit escape twice on my keyboard. And I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to go to toggle radius because we want ourselves a radius dimension. So I'm going to go to toggle radius and it's going to go to a radius dimension. Now our radius is the nominal diameter divided by 10. I'm going to double click. I'm going to go DIA divided by 10. And I'm going to hit enter. And we now have for ourselves the curve that we need right down here. So what we need to do next is we're going to draw for ourselves a diagonal line on the left side. And we're going to make it tangent to our first circle we drew and the last circle we drew. So I'm going to come right back into Fusion. I'm going to grab hold of the line command. I'm going to draw for myself a line that is you know, on the outside of the object. And we're going to grab hold of tangent and say tangent to that circle. And we want this to be tangent to this circle. We're going to grab hold of the trim command, and you're going to have to make sure that you trim everything that is outside of the lines. You might get a warning message on the side about dimensions being removed, but that is generally okay. But it looks to me like a dimension got removed up here. I should see a tangent constraint, and this is blue. So let's go to tangent again, and I'm going to say from here to here, we want that tangent symbol to show up. We want the tangent symbol down here. It's probably going to say that's over constrained, but we want this to be black. So sometimes you're going to have to go in and reconstrain when you trim. We're going to do the exact same thing to the opposite side. If that stayed blue, we want to go in and make sure that we had constrained everything exactly the way we wanted. I'm going to go to tangent again and say from here to here, tangent from here to here, and I'm going to go to trim. And I want to trim off each of these lines. We ignore the warning for now. If it turns blue, we would go back in and change some things, but we're not going to worry about that for now because this stayed black. So we're good. Next thing we want to do is create the hole in the middle, and we just called that hole. So I'm going to come up to my circle command, click on the origin, and drag out. And I'm just going to type the word hole. And automatically, you see it recognize the user parameter of hole. I'm going to click and hit Enter twice. And we now have ourselves the hole that will actually put the axle or the crankshaft through. Next thing we want to do is we want to do this little curve in here in the top. And it has a radius of the diameter divided by 10, similar to what we see down here at the bottom. So we're going to come up and draw for ourselves a circle, just anywhere up here. And what I want to do is I want to say, you know what, this needs to be tangent to this. And I can hit escape twice, and I can drag this out to where it comes outside the object, because what we want is for this to be tangent to this side as well. And down here we have a function of a radius to 10. If I grab a hold of my dimension, and I click and I drag out, and I come down here and I click on the bottom down here, I'm going to hit enter automatically. We have a diameter in this case of 0.1. Now, maybe I don't want that. So I'm just going to go to delete. I'll try to delete that, that dimension there. I'm just going to click and drag out. And what we'll do is I'm just going to enter twice, hit escape on my keyboard. I'm going to right click and go to toggle radius. Let that stay radius. And I'm going to double click and type DIA divided by 10 and hit enter. And automatically now we have for ourselves a curve that's going to fit right in here. Now we have it tangent, we have it vertically constrained, and we now have everything that we need to go ahead and extrude. Notice that when I drag my mouse inside of any of these areas, it's going to show us the separate you know, um, profiles, if you will. There's all these different things that we can extrude. I'm going to go to Finish Sketch. I'm going to go to my isometric view, and I'm going to go to Extrude. I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to get a hold of everything we want to extrude. And I'm going to drag 
and we're just going to type out the word thick. And notice how it sees thick, and it's automatically going to reference a 0.5 extrusion distance. And we have for ourselves our heart-shaped cam. Now, what's nice about this is we can go back now to modify, and we're going to go down to change parameters. And I'm going to move this over a little bit. And one thing that you want to do is that when you start out with a basic diameter, whenever you create anything, try to be as close as possible to the actual diameter, because I'm going to go 1.1 and hit enter, and it's slowly going to grow on us. And one thing Fusion will do is it'll slowly read a gradual walk up. If you jump from something like one to like, I don't know, five, you might see some parts start to disappear. Now it kept that curve right there. If I go back to three, it changed on me real fast. It doesn't like to jump back and forth. So one thing you might need to do from here is, you know, instead of having three, let's go back to one and it's going to go back to its original shape. Sometimes if you jump around because of the way the sketch was made, it's going to create different types of constraints. And like when I went from one, I'm going to jump up to three again, it jumps up. So sometimes you have to walk it up. Remember when I went from five backwards to three, it kind of messed up on us. So one of the things in Fusion is you want to make sure that you're gradually walking it up. So try to stay in the ballpark of what you anticipate the original diameter being, because you can slowly walk it up or slowly, you know, walk it back. I'm going to go 0 0.9 and it'll change its shape. So this has been a video on how to go about creating the heart-shaped cam in Fusion 360 through using parametric equations.